let's talk about how the zonal statistics tool works. Um, this is a tool that we can use to summarize rasters and you can um, work with either raster or vector as your kind of your zone or your defining area. But let me show you a couple of images um, first. So just so you know, I'm using the resources that Esri has online for ArcGIS Pro, the same um, kind of write-ups exist for ArcMap, whatever you're using. But um, I think these illustrations are really helpful. So when you run zonal statistics, what you're doing is statistically summarizing a value raster like elevation or slope or wind speed or population densities. And you're summarizing those values within a zone. And so the zone can be defined, like I said, by either a raster or vector data. Um, here we have um, a raster set of zones. And so each one is mapping a neighborhood or a study area, or um, you know maybe it's even a land cover type where you have a bunch of cells that share um, some kind of vegetation class and you want to know if there's you know you want to be able to describe or summarize the elevation which within each one of those um, so for our exercise we're going to be using vector data to define our zones um, for the example specifically there'll be um, polygons that map the rim of craters on mars um, but the polygons could be anything that you can imagine, any kind of enumeration unit like a census block or, um, you know, a study site or whatever it is. So zone, value raster, which is a continuous range of values, right, like slope, elevation, etc. Um, or it could be uh, categorical raster data like a land cover type might be the value raster that you're summarizing. And then it creates an output. And the output is defined by whatever statistical summary that you input into the tool. Um, so here you can see, here's your input value raster and the overlay kind of stamps out the zones areas. And then you say, I'd like to know what the maximum value is per zone or the minimum or the average or the median or uh, the majority, like what's the most common value within each zone. Um, there are a lot of different uh, statistics that you can calculate, um, and there are some weeds that we can get into. Um, here's um, an example of uh, here's an example of using vector data as your overlay. Um, the little pink dots are the center values or the center of each cell, um, and so it's kind of talking through different ways um, or the process for determining. Uh, which values from a raster are going to be included in polygon zones. It's a little bit different than a raster overlay using, um, which is basically a mask. Um, so check that out. And then I was going to flip over to this guy. I believe. Yeah. Uh, focal statistics because I wanted to show you that there is a big old list of the statistics. I clicked on the wrong one. I wanted to click on um, zonal statistics as a table. You can run a straight zonal statistics tool which um, takes your input zones and then kind of um, outputs the same zones with the summary value in it, but it only runs one statistic type at a time. And I generally am interested in all of the statistics because it's much more interesting. So I always run it as a table. So basically you have your input zones, your value raster, and the output is not gonna appear on your map. It's gonna appear as a standalone table with a summary of all the statistics for each one of your um, input zones. Um, but this is where that nice list of uh, here different statistic types that can be calculated. So I always run all because why not? Um, you get you can get out the mean. So basically, just one more time, um, if you have uh, well, I'm going to actually demonstrate it for you. Um, but whatever your neighborhood is or your zone that you're interested in, it'll take the input raster cells that overlap that area and calculate the mean value for you. The majority is the value that occurs most often. The maximum is the highest value within your zone. Median, minimum, minority, the least common. That's different than the lowest, which is the minimum. 
Uh, the percentile, I've never used that before. Actually, that doesn't show up very often in the output results. The percentile of all cells in the value raster that belong to the same zone as the output cell will be calculated. Huh, that could be interesting. The range, the difference between the min and the max, standard deviation, sum. You'd have to think about, you know, if maybe uh, each cell value is a count of um, observed you know, some observed plant type in a study area, and you want to know what the total is. Variety, how many different values there are. This could be useful, I think, if your, um, your value raster was something like land cover, where the cell values represent a different kind of land cover type. Variety would help you get at, you know, how much diversity there is in the landscape. Um, I guess it could be used for something like if it were slope. Um, no, uh, not really. The range, I guess, would get more at, um, you know, terrain roughness or, or something like that. Variety wouldn't really help. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so that's, that's it. A lot of different statistics, and let's run through a quick example. So here I have an elevation raster for the United States. Um, I can look at the value 0 to um, 4,328. And for the contiguous U.S., this is uh, reasonable for meters above sea level. And then I have these uh, yellowish outlines of the states. So let's just run zonal statistics as a table. Okay, so you have to read this first one carefully. Input raster, you might think, oh, that's my elevation. But keep reading. Zone data. The zones that we're interested in, we want to summarize elevation for each state. So each state is your zone, so the zone is going to be the states. Um, zone field. This is pretty important. Let's open the attribute table. It defaulted something for us, right? So we want to make sure we get a unique result for each one of the states. So we need to use um, a field that has a unique identifier in it. Object status. They're all zeros, and so if that were our default, we would get one summary for the whole, the whole United States because they all share the same value. Object identifier, if this is a unique value, that will work, but we're going to get a value, um, like a summary value for one, and we're not going to know what that means. So let's use the name field just to make sure that our results are easy. Um, yep. Uh, input value raster, we want to be our elevations. And then our output table, let's make sure that goes someplace identifiable. I'm going to throw it on the desktop. We'll call it a state elevation. Mm, doesn't like that I'm doing that. There we go. Okay. And statistics type, you can see here, all, or you have to pick one, but why would you do that? It's a table. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and run it. Okay, I'm getting a little pop-up, letting me know that everything ran okay. Notice my map doesn't change at all because um, nothing's added to my map, but I have the table, which I can open. All right, so... Let's take a look at that. All right, so luckily we chose the name fields. So we have an individual row for each one of our states. Okay, um, some things are automatically calculated for us, which is kind of nice. The count, this is the number of cells that was summarized for each state. So if we were to sort this descending, for example, we would expect our biggest states to have the largest cell count. That's what this is. How many raster cells were summarized? The area is being calculated because ARC knows the um, resolution of this raster, and it's taking the count and multiplying it by the cell size. Um, let's go back to, let's just sort this alphabetically. Okay, so the minimum value of 1, a maximum of 675. Does that make sense for elevation in meters for a state like Alabama? The one makes sense because it's sea level. So all these that have one are probably on the coast. And then we have to look at max values. So Arizona has some really low elevations, but also a lot of mountains. So this makes good sense to me. I don't know about you, but 
Um, the range, we could sort this and we could maybe identify states that have, you know, a lot of mountains. So this lineup kind of makes sense. These are all states that we would expect to have a large change in elevation. Average elevation could be pretty interesting. Standard deviation um, might be interesting for helping describe how much uh, landscape variability there is for um, elevation. How about sum? What happens if we sum elevations? This might also uh, um, obviously be autocorrelated with states that have a lot of mountains because we would expect um, we would expect that, right? Um, maybe the more of the state that's high elevation, the higher this sum is going to be. So this is summing all the raster cells' elevation values. And so it's kind of neat to see that Colorado has um, the highest overall elevations. Variety, this is how many different unique values there are for elevation. Kind of interesting, kind of not. Um, the most common elevation in Colorado is 2,011 meters above sea level, minority, median, and that percent, 90%. So uh, that is zonal statistics as a table. It's a really great tool, super convenient way to summarize um, large scale uh, or really small plot sizes um, and be able to make comparisons. We use this all the time. You can compare watersheds um, and you know summarize elevations, slopes, aspects for, um, you could take wildfire areas, um, historic burns, and you could summarize land cover type, slope, aspect, elevation, um, you know, typical wind speeds, summer temperatures. The, it's, the implications for this are endless and the inputs are, are also uh, limitless. Okay, um, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know.